Hello everybody, welcome back to the ASUS RG YouTube page. This is JJ once again. Now if you checked us out already, uh, you already happened to see a couple of different unboxings for some of our 900 series product motherboard. Now one of those boards was the Sabertooth 990FX. Now that board stands out in terms of having a lot of different technologies implemented, not only that are unique to the 990FX series chipset, but also unique in terms of what ASUS is bringing to the market. It had our DigiPlus VRM, but taking it further, it had our tough rated components. Um, which are tough choke, our tough uh, MOSFET, and our tough capacitors. Um, this along with the internal server grade reliability testing that we do, and then also the independent mil spec validation that we do on our tough components, really helps to kind of set the bar for the extended durability and reliability of the tough series motherboard. You bring along with it other, you know, performance oriented features such as two-way SLI support, three-way SLI support, SATA 6G RAID support, um, you know, front and back USB 3, our performance oriented but easy and flexible UEFI BIOS, you know, you've got a really standout board. But ASUS always wanted to do a little bit more. One of the cool features uh, that we pointed out but we didn't get to show you in the unboxing was actually our thermal radar technology. Now the Tough Series board really has a, a whole bunch that's integrated on the board that's about helping to ensure long-term reliability and durability, as well as to help improve cooling performance. Now, one of the things that we discussed was a whole lot of fan connectivity and that there was also 10 hardware sensors on the motherboard. Now, if we actually take a look at the motherboard, you're not going to necessarily be able to see all these sensors, but they're mapped out throughout the entire motherboard. This type of implementation helps to work with other mechanisms that we have at play that help to extend their durability, such as we have special ESD guards that are built onto the motherboard that help dissipate electrostatic discharge, which can sometimes come through the form of a USB device being plugged in and shorting out something on the board and causing it to fail. Uh, other mechanisms at play is we have um, switching chips that are built onto the motherboard as well. And it's very common to get a motherboard that has power switching for the CPU and for the memory. But Tuff takes it further and has actually switching for the graphics card, it has switching for the actual LAN ports, and it has switching for the USB 3. It's able to go ahead and power down those, those components when not necessarily utilized or under lighter levels of load to go ahead and provide better efficiency, lower operating temperatures, and help extend the durability and the reliability of the product because you're not putting as much stress on it. Now, keeping all these things in mind, as we discussed, we have thermal radar, which what we're gonna do now is actually show that to you. We're actually gonna jump into AI Suite 2, which is our unified all-in-one application. We're gonna click on the thermal radar button, and we're actually gonna allow you to see what it, has to, what, what, what it can do for you. Now, right off the bat, you can see something that's really cool. You see an actual visual representation of the motherboard. And here, in terms of the right-hand side and temperatures, you see 10 points. These are actually all the points on the motherboards where we have the actual hardware sensors. And these are giving you full real-time readings. This then allows you to go ahead and see what happens as you put your system under load. What happens when you overclock it? What happens when this GPU is running your game and you've been gaming for six hours straight? Are you getting certain parts of the motherboard that are heating up more than other parts and maybe you want to adjust your fan flow accordingly? We've kept that in mind as well because you can also go ahead and take a look at the fan options where you can report all the fan speeds. So we have CPU fan, optional fan, fan one, fan two, fan three, fan four, and also then <clears throat> voltages that are present on the board that would be key ones that you want to monitor as well. But in terms of functionality, we can actually go here to the fans and these will actually be illuminated as we plug in more fan devices. So as we can see here, we have our CPU fan. We can go ahead and click on that and we, if we want to make an adjustment, we can go to settings and this will then go ahead and open up a nice fan curve. And we can see right here, this relates to all these items and it gives us nice little target points letting us know in relation to which one of these items that we're taking a look at the temperature at and how we want to make an adjustment in relation to those devices. And we have profiles that are also set up on the board. These profiles are standard, silent, turbo, or the user can customize their own fan curve to relate to any one of those items. If they want to sync it into one of those where one of those is going higher, then we can make an adjustment. And we even allow for automatic settings that will automatically take all that data in as it's being processed by the 10 sensors. And however you have your fans, have your fans connected, it'll go ahead and adjust accordingly to help you have the overall best operating temperatures for your system. But also while maintaining a balanced and reasonable uh, sound output in terms of your fan speeds. 
but it's really a whole nother level of customization that really no other board is offering you in terms of how you can define your cooling experience. We can see we can also quickly switch over between that CPU and the chassis fan and also have the same type of customized features and functionality that we have uh, for the CPU. If we go back out lastly, you actually even have a full chassis layout and you can see here that we of course have two headers that are connected, the CPU fan and the chassis fan and those are mapped out and that's illustrating to us that those are connected and what fan speeds are going for. So you can definitely see there's quite a bit of functionality that's offered, not only through AI Suite 2, but then through Thermal Radar, that then is enabled, of course, by our implementation in terms of the Thermal Radar hardware that's actually on the motherboard itself. Hopefully you found this, you found this informative. If you guys have any questions or comments, definitely leave them on the page or check us out at asusrog.com forward slash forums.